Hello, Alina Wilson here with Estimate Mastery, and uh, good to be on with you guys this fine Tuesday evening, or if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching. And so we're really excited over here at Estimate Mastery because it is almost time for IRE. So the International Roofing Expo is next February, no, next week, February 6th and through the 8th, and at, we here at Estimate Mastery will have a booth at the International Roofing Expo. So if you're in the area, please come say hello. So that's my uh, little bit of housekeeping I was going to share tonight. Um, we do have uh, a guest in the house that we've got a little Emmy Lou over here. I don't know if anybody's met my kitty, but this is sweet little Emmy Lou. Emmy Lou got locked in the office, so I need to let, let me Emmy Lou out. So please excuse me for one moment as we let little Emmy on her way. There we go. I didn't realize I closed her in, so apologies, but I wanted to be focused so I can deliver this information that I have for you. I'm so excited to talk about tonight. So um, really what the heart of the issue is, is getting OMP paid, right? So what we want to talk about specifically on tonight's call is the complexity argument. Okay, so um, anybody here that uh, I see Taurus over there, but anybody here that's ever heard I can't pay OMP from an adjuster followed by because the job isn't complex enough. Anybody hear that? Anybody? I can see people like nodding at their screens right now, right? So that's what we're here to discuss uh, this evening and I'm here for it and really excited for all of you guys uh, to learn. So we'll get to it in just a few moments. Yes, Alex. Hi, Alex. Nice to see you. Becky and Steve and Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for backing me up hearing it all the time. Now, just a little bit of a backstory. I've been in the insurance industry for 12 years. And 12 years ago, when I started training adjusters, that's where I came from, training Xactimate to hurricane, wind, tornado, cat adjusters is what they call them, or independent adjusters. That's where I come from. So when I was teaching those classes, I was parroting what the third party adjusting firm told me to tell these new people going through the paces to get their adjuster's license and be trained on Xactimate. I sat there for a couple of years while I was still training adjusters and would say to those people going through my class, hey, you can't pay OMP unless there's three trades or more, right? That was 12 years ago. And I was parroting that information because I had never owned a roofing rest restoration or mitigation company. And I didn't un understand that the Xactimate white paper was actually defined where OMP should or shouldn't be added. Okay, so we'll get into that in just a second. The point of the, the story is, is that um, I was the problem, right? I'm the problem, it's me. So it came out of my ignorance of knowing how the restoration industry actually works, okay? I had done remodels, been in construction forever, done real estate, all the things. I grew up with my dad remodeling almost every single house we ever lived in. So I knew from the age of five how to hold a drywall pan while he did the, the drywall work on the ceiling. I mean, I knew my stuff but I didn't know the actual practical knowledge of what it takes to get a, in a restoration environment to restore the home back to the condition before the loss. I had been in remodels, new builds, all that. So that's where we need to start with this complexity issue. Used to be three trades, like I just said. Now, what, three, four years ago, we've been starting to hear little whispers and now it's heavily, it seems like in my, um, you know, keeping my ear to the ground in the industry, it seems like they're heavily going now down the lane of the complexity argument. Yeah, Gregory said, heard four trades lately. So whatever it is, that's not, by Xactimate's definitions, that's not the rules. As much as the adjusters, insurance companies want to think that they can make the rules, it's actually not the rules by Xactimate standards. So I've got so much to say about this. This could be a, a two hour long uh, Facebook Live because I've got lots of little rabbit holes that I can go down. But let me keep to the, the high points here. So first of all, the adjuster doesn't know. He doesn't know what it takes to be in a restoration environment. It's not a retail market. It's not a retail environment that we are doing this work in. It's not somebody who wants to make a pink roof gray because that's the new trend. It's nothing like that. It's a restoration environment where damage has happened, storm-related damage, um, sudden and accidental is the definitions, and we are having to work in a different capacity than we do when we do a retail job. Okay, so that's where I'm going to kind of go down the road with this. First of all, though, I need you to understand what I mean by the rules are written in the Xactivate about who gets OMP and who doesn't. 
Okay, so there's a white paper out there. Many of you have seen it. But for those, some of those that are newer or just, you know, following our channel, I want to be sure to be clear what the rules are about, um, so, uh, about the overhead and profit. So if you look at the white paper on OMP, you can find it over on Exact Meets uh, eService Center, uh, and you can see a clear line of definition. There is overhead and profit baked into each and every line item in Exact Meet that's of over and above the labor and materials on every single price list. However, that overhead and profit is designated for the subcontractor. As soon as you become the GC, I'm trying to be an umbrella here, as soon as you coordinate the inform the uh, trades below you, you now become what Xactimate defines as a general contractor. They also have a roofing white paper that actually isn't on the site at the moment. I think they're redoing it. But that roof roofing white paper even lined it out further. It said that the market used to call for roofing uh, contractors that just specialized in roofing. And that those organizations are now called roofing sales organizations. Since the roofing sales organization now hires out the subs, that means that Tom Smith, who owns Smith Roofing, isn't taking his hammer and going and hammering the roof. He's subbing it out. That in this new environment, even trades such as roofing, the single trade is warranted OMP if the roofing sales organization is ran by a general contractor and is subbing out the work. So that's the line of demarcation is, is the work subbed or is it not? That's where mitigation com contractors come into a little bit of hardship because a lot of their employees are W-2. Okay, so that's that's really the line. Yeah, the roofing white paper, Becky, is not available right now. Um, I have it on my inside of my paid membership, but... Um, the one that used to be on the site isn't isn't there yet. I'm an exact word or exact make certified trainer. I'm lobbying to get that put back on the site currently. So right now, um, it's not available to the public public, but hopefully it'll come back soon. But uh, you can find it at eService. Is it Verisk now? They changed their name. eService.exactword.com is where you used to find it. And um, I can put that up as a banner really quick. Give me a second. But you can find the overhead and profit white paper at this website. Um, I, I think it's Exactware. If Exactware doesn't work, try putting Verisk here. But there's the site. So that's where you can go and find it. And you used to be able to find the roof, roof pricing white paper, but right now it's, it's down. It's not on the site. So, yeah. All right. So a couple of things there that I wanted to go over. So. That's the line of demarcation. As soon as you sub out the work, there is no overhead and profit for the general contractor. You are working for free. A big old goose egg. You don't work for free, Mr. Adjuster. I don't work for free. So let's get down to brass tacks and how we can get this um, open overhead and profit at it because I'm working in a restoration environment. That's the, that's the verbiage right there. I'm working in a restoration environment and not in a retail environment. Okay. So I'm going to take some questions here at the end, but if you'll bear with me, and just hold your questions. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of documents that we have put together. Now, we, as of uh, a couple of weeks ago, here in um, at Estimate Mastery, of course, I have a paid membership and all of that. But for our members, we've put together a document that I wanted to give you a glance at of what we're the direction that we're going to solve this complexity argument, or hmm, it's not even an argument. Their statement, right? It's an opinion, it's not based on facts. So that's what uh, I talked about on a group coaching call for my members earlier today was they love to put us in a gray area where there really isn't any definitions and it's all loosey goosey. No, let's bring it back to reality. There are facts that we can talk about. I appreciate your opinion that it's compl not complex enough, but let's talk about the facts. In a retail environment, let me just show you this doc real quick. I didn't have this on deck, so let me get in up on the screen. That's going to be this one right there. Yep, there we go. There's our coordination of complexity. This is a document that we share with our inside paid members here at Estimate Mastery, but I wanted to give you a glance over it. It's uh, nothing fancy. We're just reminding the adjuster of the high points. So for instance, complexity for insurance work or restoration in a restoration environment as a GC, general contractor includes, well, guess what? Now we have to collaborate with you. If this is a retail job, I wouldn't be talking to you. I'd be knocking the door. I'd be selling the roof. I'd be doing the build. I'd be getting a check. Now, what used to be a simple proposition of getting, you know, from tip to tail of the sale, 
is now being dragged out over months. I have to learn a new piece of software called Xactimate. I have to hire my admin to build the stupid estimate. I now have to submit it to you and wait for you to take your sweet time to get back to me. And once we do have a conversation, you'd pretty much say no to everything. This is not a simple retail environment. This is a restoration environment. And there is much complexity and coordination. There's your other word. Not only is it complex, you have to coordinate. Okay, so that's where this comes into view. I now have to order an Eagle View. I now have to get in the attic and make sure there's everything's copacetic there, that there isn't anything that, uh, you know, it's leaked further on down because it's a restoration environment. That means damage has happened. Code documentation. Now I have to go look at my manufacturer documentation to make sure that that meets code and vice versa. Safety documentation, which a retail job, you might have OSHA, but, you know, that's something to take into uh, consideration. Photo documentation. This is a huge time suck. If you're taking the right amount of photos in the right way out in the field, even if you know what you're doing and if you've been doing it for 15 years, photos of every single piece of the puzzle would not have to be presented in a, re in a retail environment, okay? Samples and tests, gotta make sure there's no mold back there, gotta protect everything to make sure that they're, uh, you know, the tarping, the plywood and all of that. Got to have, you know, uh, uh, adjuster meetings. Now I have to meet with you and I have to talk to you. Uh, that adds an extra, you know, four or five hours to the process. You have to follow up with them. You have to send in final documentation to get depreciation re release, yada, yada, yada. Even this first section, y'all, the first section of my long document that I have built out here, even the first section, that's where we got to take away the gray area and you got to talk facts not opinions. We don't work in gray areas. We work with facts. Here's the facts. So think, sit down and, and think, uh, just take, you know, 30 minutes, sit down and think of the whole process. Here's retail, make maybe a little bulleted list. Here's restoration environment. Here's my insurance work. What do you do that's much differently than you would on a retail job? And that's really the meat and potatoes of what we've created here. That's all it is. We just take the time to sit down and put pen to paper. So but I don't care, pull out a notebook right now and start jotting some of these things down. Anything that's different than a retail environment brings argumentatively argument brings the argument that it's now in the realm of complexity. Okay. I will not send this document to you. Uh, I'm going to take off this little banner here for us. The document that I showed you will not be sent to anyone. It's for our paid members, but all I did, I didn't do anything fancy. I'm not a unicorn. I just sat, we sat down with, um, you know, some of our coaches and just put pen to paper about what all the differences are. That's all that this really is. Of course, it's nice that the work is already done for you. If you're one of our members, I think we had a couple members in the chat there, um, for a second, but yeah, um, Yay, Christopher, there's Christopher. He's one of our members. Yep, you can get that inside the university. We're posted. So anyways, again, we're not unicorns. Just sit down and think of what the differences are. Trades, that's a different argument, right? So I kind of like that we have complexity. It's more of a gray area. When they say three trades or more or four trades or more, that's a little harder to dissect that argument because there's a hard line there. Well, actually, da, da, da. No, but when complexity comes into it, ooh, Let's define complexity. You may actually go to the, the, uh, the, you know, your Webster's dictionary and pull out that definition and then just start a little running document of all the complex things that you have to do on a daily basis compared to a retail environment. Also, it goes back to if there's no overhead and profit added for the general contractor over all the estimate for the coordination, then you're working for free. Okay. The other thing that happens, and again, I'm almost at my 15 minute mark, but what I want to tell you, the other thing that happens that you may not know is the underwriting process. Most of the time, and I'm not saying always, there are some interesting policies being written right now, but most of the time your insured is paying a policy premium that includes general overhead and profit. And the insurance company gets to take that part of the premium, put it right in their pocket, and they don't pay you out. See what I'm saying? They're paying for the OMP but the insurance company isn't paying it for the roof or the siding or whatever it is, interior work, if you don't have enough trades, yada, yada, yada. That's where Xactimate has that definition because they had to put a clear line of what was going on and then it goes into getting that policy holder to understand, you're paying for something you're not getting. They're not gonna pay me as my general contractor. So more you can leverage the policy holder, the homeowner, whatever you wanna call them, the better off you're going to be. So that's the the, the kind of the third piece of the argument. Um, it needs to come from the person who holds the policy, 
Of course, we never discuss policy with the adjuster as contractors, but um, you can inform them and show them. Yeah. Um, if you're a public adjuster, you can say that all day long, but as contractors, we don't want to cross into unlicensed practice of public adjusting. So we inform the homeowner um, of what's going on and uh, yeah, how does that feel to have them pocket that part of the premium that you've been paying for the last 30 years, Mrs. Smith? So anyways, yeah. Um, yep. Anyways, uh, that is what I have for tonight. We, we are up on time, but hope that was useful to you. Of course, please, if you like these videos that we've been doing, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. I know you hear this all the time in all the videos, but it actually helps the, the creator because that um, tells the algorithm that they should show this video to more people. So if you would like, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear a comment. If you have a question, we always uh, try to respond to everyone that, that puts a comment in our section here. And of course, if you'd like to follow us, I will be at the International Roofing Expo next week. So, um, oh, that reminds me, hey, yes, indeed. If you are interested in looking uh, at what it takes to uh, be a part of our paid membership, we I have a link for you. Right now, we only work with roofing exterior contractors or restoration contractors. So if you're an adjuster, sorry, there's other training out there for you. We really specialize in helping the roofing exterior contractors as well as the um, uh, restoration people. Mitigation also, uh, REITs Drying Academy has a great program for mitigation contractors. I try to refer people over there. But our jam is helping roofing exterior and restoration contractors smash all the arguments that they try to bring to the table. So yeah, thanks, Josh. Thanks, Alec. Good to see you, Christopher. Yep. Hope to see you on some calls soon. And Pitbull, good to see you. Yep. All right. Anyways, that's it for me. I, uh, yep. I'm not, we don't talk pricing because we tailor the program to fit your needs. So if you're interested, book a call with our team and we will have that conversation. Absolutely. Yep. I'll be back next week. I'll be broadcasting from the International Roofing Expo. Super excited to be out there and uh, hope to meet some of you guys in person. And then I'll be back the following week with more of this kind of educational content and uh, hope to see you then. And yeah, thanks for all. Thanks, Steve, David, Taurus. Excellent. Good to see you guys. And we'll see you maybe in person next week.